Dad, there's a horse sale too. Can I go look? Linda jumped up and down on the spot, her eyes shining. Is there now? Tom winked at Linda. I hadn't heard about that. Linda slapped Ross across the arm. I didn't tell him. Tom McLeod laughed heartily. He's off, little girl. I already knew about it. I suspected that was why you wanted to come. You did? Yes, I did. The three of them stood and laughed together. The auctioneer's voice boomed over the loudspeaker, the words rolling off his tongue. Five, five, who'll give me five fifty? Go on, go look at the horses, but be careful. Don't get in any of the wrangler's way. I'm sure you'll find us if you need to, Tom said. Linda squealed with delight and ran for the horse pens, her father and brother watching until she disappeared through the barn's door. Linda scooted around a tall pile of hay bales, then skidded to a stop. There were dozens of wooden railed pens filled with scrawny, mangy cattle and horses. The sharp overhead lights made every rib stand out. Men with downcast faces and eyes wandered about the pens, their shoulders slumped in defeat. Slim boys in stained jeans and gumboots forked hay into the pens. The cattle and horses kicked and bit their neighbors, fighting for the feed. Tears filled Linda's eyes. It was clear that many ranchers had tried to hold out through the winter, but hadn't made it. The sad eyes and the racks of ribs were the result. She slowly walked by the pens of thin cattle and thanked God that they had two really good cuttings of hay last year. Her mother complained that her father was a Scrooge, but now Linda was grateful for it. She kept her eyes to the ground until she rounded the corner and reached the first of the horse pens. She stopped and looked over the stall door. Six rangy mustangs looked at her, their eyes filled with mistrust, their mouths filled with hay. She reached over the gate and tried to scratch a dark bay filly with a half moon on her forehead, but the horse spooked backwards and almost toppled over a big bay gelding. You won't do. You're way too spooky, Linda said sadly. She moved on to the next pen. A chubby white Welsh pony nickered and stretched his head out to her. He was fat and roly-poly, just like Sal. She laughed and tickled him behind the ears. The pony tipped his head sideways and leaned into her hand, loving the attention. A young, raven-haired woman wandered towards her, stopped and leaned against the stall door. He's cute, isn't he? She said. She giggled as the pony lifted his head and nibbled on her coat sleeve, clearly wanting her to pet him too. He is, he's a lot like my pony Sal, Linda replied. I'm looking for a pony for my daughter. She's only five. He'd be a good size for her. All the other horses and ponies that I've seen are much too big, and some are quite wild, the woman volunteered. I bet this little guy would suit you. He's really friendly, but he needs to go on a diet, Linda laughed. I don't know much about horses. A friend suggested that I come and look at the auction, the woman said. I just don't know what I'm looking at, and I'd be terrified to go into the ring and bid on him. I'm afraid that I'd get carried away and pay too much. I can have my dad or my brother take a good look at him if you want. Dad knows a lot about horses. He'll tell you if he thinks this pony is sound, Linda offered. Thank you. I'd appreciate that, the woman replied. I'm trying to find a horse for myself. It's time for us to retire, Sal, Linda added as she moved down to the next pen, the woman walking along beside her. There's a really pretty horse over there, she pointed. Turn left at the end of this aisle and go to the very back of the building. There's a very pretty yellow and white horse there. I don't know what they call her. I really don't know very much about horses, I'm afraid. But she seems really out of place here. She's very friendly, not like the rest of them at all. I'll go and look. Linda thanked the woman and ran down the alley. She glanced at the horses in the pens she passed, but none of the horses seemed worth a second look. She dodged a chap with a wheelbarrow, clipped him on the elbow, and muttered an apology. She raced on until she found her way to the horse in question. The filly popped her head over top of the stall door and whinnied at Linda. Linda skidded to a stop, her eyes widening and her mouth falling open at the sight of the dark Palomino before her. The filly's eyes were big and round. They regarded her with a calm intelligence. She had a white blaze down the middle of her face and a luxurious white mane and tail. Wow! You're beautiful, Linda exclaimed. 